time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. We are continuing our 49ers roster countdown with number 35, Kerry Hyder. Um, defensive lineman, came into the league as a tackle, then went to end. Now he's kind of playing inside and outside, and this is the monster that Cruz Chris Kucerich has created. Uh, the 49ers defensive line coach has cultivated Kerry Hyder. His two best seasons have been under um, his tutelage, and it, it's not even just a 49ers thing, and we're going to talk about that. Now, again, if, if you're a 49ers fan, you remember the 2020 season for way too many reasons. All the injuries, you know, you had all the hype coming off the Super Bowl loss, then week two versus the Jets, everybody got hurt. And it was just, it seemed just like a wasted season. But not for Kerry Hyder, who stepped in for an injured Nick Bosa and was incredible getting eight and a half sacks. Um, so we're going to journey through Kerry Hyder's crazy journey <laughs> to the 49ers, leave the 49ers, back to the 49ers, what his, you know, past looks like, what he was has been able to accomplish in the NFL. But more importantly, whenever you walk away from this video, what does the future for Kerry Hyder and the 49ers look like? Because we got him at number 35. The, he is going to play an important role for the 49ers. Now, the size of that role that's what's up for interpretation. Now, who is this guy? Six foot two, 275. Now, he's down to 275. Whenever he came into the league, he was 290 plus. Uh, he's 31 years old, entering into his seventh season. Now, he is from Austin, Texas, went to Lyndon Baines Johnson High School, the Jaguars, the Purple Jaguars, um, and was a business major. Three star recruit out of Austin and chose Texas Tech, the Red Raiders. Um, now, a couple other interesting things about him before we jump into his film and kind of all those things. He's the cousin of former NFL cornerback Chris Houston, who was a six-year pro. He was a two-sport two athlete in high school, basketball, and football. Big old boy. Uh, you know, 290 playing basketball at 6'2 is interesting. He had offers from Cincinnati, Iowa State, Minnesota, Toledo, Utah, and chose to go to Tech. Now, he played 11 games there his freshman year. And, you know, was just always kind of a tweener, defensive tackle to defensive end. Where does he really fit? 3-4, three, 4-3. Four, four, three. And it's going to take him a while to figure out where he did belong. Now, he racked up a lot of accolades. Uh, you know, he was first team all Big 12 from the Austin American Statesman, Phil Steele, Dallas Morning News, AP all Big 12. He was the all Big 12 defensive lineman of the year honorable mention. Um, and just kind of, you know, he was all over the place and just had a lot of success at Tech. Now, his wife, Jasmine, um, was a prominent track and field star at Arizona State, and she eventually made the 2011 World Championship team and competed in the 2016 Olympic trials in the 400 meters. So very athletic family, a lot of success, um, and tr kind of transitioned from DT to defensive end in 2016, and this is not his first year with the 49ers. Now, if we look at kind of who he was coming into the NFL, 6'2", 290, <laughs> came in as a DT, worked out with the defensive tackles, and that's where he was projected. But again, always a tweener because it just struggled. Now, his 40-yard dash, 5.1, not great. Bench press, 20 reps, not great. Three cone, 7.2, good for a DT, eh, not great. Vertical, 29 and a half, that's pretty good. And so... You know, he gets undrafted and gets picked up, and he's had a crazy journey. 2014, he gets picked up by the New York Jets. Never really played for him. They, they cut him. Uh, the last roster cut, he didn't make it. But then he got picked up and signed a reserve contract after the season with the Detroit Lions. Chris Kucerich was the D-line co coach there. So, rookie year, didn't get a play. Finally lands with the Jets, I mean with the Lions. They waived him, then brought him back and signed him to a contract the following year. So literally had to wait almost two years before he got significant playing time. And that's whenever he finally had a great year. 2017, 2018, he was with Detroit, went off with Detroit. Then he signed a one-year deal with the Dallas Cowboys, didn't put up much anything. Gets brought to the 49ers in 2020 on a one-year, $1.5 million contract with the 49ers. Chris Kucerich brings him over. Eight and a half sacks like we talked about. After that year, he got to cash in. 
the division opponents, rivals, the Seattle Seahawks, signed him to a three-year, $6.8 million deal. Freaking love to see people get paid. I hate that he signed with Seattle, but love to see people get paid. Um, and so for somebody that's bounced around the NFL and had to go through all those teams without even playing and getting cut, not even being on rosters during the season, to finally get that contract, that's huge. So congrats to him. It didn't pan out. Didn't pan out at all. They cut him after the first year. He had one and a half sack last year. We'll dive a little deeper into the analytics there. Um, and so he gets released by Seattle. Now, he got cut after one year, but he got to keep $3.6 million. So he got a little over half of the deal. Seattle had to kind of pay to steal him away from the 49ers. And the 49ers were fine with it because they got a comp pick out of it. And after they cut him, we got him back on the cheap. So the 49ers signed him March 23rd, 2022. So before the draft, they signed him to a one-year, $1.5 million contract. Now, this contract's unique. One, zero signing bonus. That's crazy for a vet. That's crazy for a vet. Half of the contract is guaranteed, so $750,000 is guaranteed, and that's all the 49ers owe on this. So if the 49ers chose to cut him if he doesn't make the team, which, again, this is a low-end contract for somebody of his stature. We'll we'll go through what that means uh, here in a second. But it was a low-end contract. If he gets cut... 750000 against the cap. Not a big deal. If he gets traded, zero. Not one penny against the 49ers cap. And he is a possible trade candidate. Now, because of this contract, it does show he wants to be here. He wants to be with Kucerik. No signing bonus? That's crazy to me. Now, let's go through his playing time each year. Didn't play for the Jets at all. He got one game for Detroit in 2015. Uh, No starts, no stats, no anything. 2016, 16 games, two starts, eight sacks, one fumble recovery, 36 tackles. I mean, 19 quarterback hits. 2017, didn't play. 2018, Detroit, seven games, one sack, right? 2019 with the Cowboys, they paid him decent money, one sack. Played in 16 games, but nothing special. 49ers last year, or 2020, holy cow. 16 games, 14 starts. Remember, Bosa got hurt. He took over that spot ASAP. One fumble recovery, eight and a half sacks, 30 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, 18 quarterback hits. Then he goes to Seattle, seven starts, played in 15 games, one and a half sacks, 33 tackles. Just, it didn't pan out. Um, he, he needs to be with his man, Chris Kucerik. So he's got 23 starts in his career. With 71 games played. Now, 20 career sacks, 141 career tackles, 28 tackles for loss. The metrics look good. They really, really do. But whenever you divide it up into the splits for Kerry Hyder with Kusarik and without Kusarik, it's bananas. Okay, so here we go. 2019 with the 49ers. 55 pressures, 8.5 sacks, 31 solo run stops. 2016 with the Detroit Lions. Kucerik was there as well. 55 pressures again, 8 sacks, 26 solo runs. The numbers are consistent with Kucerik whenever he gets the snaps. Now, his two best years outside of Kucerik, 2021 Seattle, 23 pressures, 1.5 sack, 15 solo run stops. Literally half the production uh, across the board except for the sacks. They're almost non-existent. 2019 Dallas, 27 pressures, one sack, 10 solo run stops. It's like a third of the production. Now, keep in mind, he hasn't had time to play with Bosa. Now, will he be out there with Bosa at the same time? Will he be a backup? Will he be a rotation? That's left to be determined for the 2022 49ers because it is deep. It's so deep at the edge position. They have the deepest edge group in the entire NFL. I don't even think it's close. You could talk about... Maybe uh, Washington, maybe Philadelphia. Those are kind of the teams that come to mind, but um, maybe the Raiders. But again, they're top-heavy. They don't have the depth behind their studs. There's no team in the NFL with the depth at defensive end like the 49ers. Nobody. Nobody. So where has he been playing? Kerry Hyder lined up with the ones um, at the left defensive end spot almost all of camp. Now, he did also line up inside on some NASCAR package type uh, stuff whenever, you know, it's the 49ers have started doing this a lot, especially last year when it's third and long or you, it's 
guaranteed going to be, you know, a play, a pass play or something like that. They'll send in four defensive ends. This is where Kerry Hyder, I'm not Kerry Hyder, I apologize, Arden Key had so much success last year. Can Kerry Hyder take over that role? We'll see. Um, you know, the best case scenario for Hyder is he's a rotational guy. Perfect candidate to play inside on NASCAR packages like we talked about. But, again, him reuniting with Chris Kucerich, where he's flourished twice. We'll have to see what happens. My, uh, Kerry Hyder is like the best break glass in case of emergency. If we've seen this, you know, Bosa goes down or a bad injury takes place, he can fill in. Now, most of his sacks were not Bosa-esque, where he just defeats the defensive or the offensive tackle and gets to the quarter. That's not what he is. He's a second and third chance winner. Hustle, effort, energy, motor, that's what he brings to the table. Bosa gets there quick because, you know, he's just a tactician and can kind of overwhelm people physically. That's not who this guy is. Kerry Hyder is an effort, 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 effort guy who fought his way to get here, and that continues to translate. And that's where he's kind of got his numbers. Now, there's three players that I think are in his realm, whether you look at contracts, uh, all one-year deals, whether you look at money, all very similar money-wise, and you look at kind of their veteran status. And that's Kerry Hyder, Jordan Willis, and Kamiko Ture. Those three guys, all very similar players. Now, I will say this, Jordan Willis and Ture are more speed guys, but again, they're situational defensive ends. I don't think all three of them are going to make it. Now, who's going to be cut or traded? I don't know. Because usually teams keep 10 defensive linemen. Well, the 49ers got six solid defensive ends. Do they keep six and four defensive tackles? Do they keep five and five? Or, uh, you know, what are they going to do? Because, again, if they only keep 10, then I think possibly two of these guys are going to be gone. I think they keep 11. And there's a strong chance that Jordan Willis, Kamiko Ture, or Kerry Hyder, one of which will be traded. Um, that's kind of what the 49ers want to happen. Now, if an injury takes place, uh, the attrition through numbers will kind of solve itself. But I think Kerry Hyder is going to be here. And I got him number 35. And so I do not even see him as somebody that's like on the brink of the 53-man cut. But the impact that he can bring to the 49ers through depth and production and through understanding this scheme, he's probably been in this scheme longer than anybody else on the defensive line. Maybe you could put Eric Armstead in there, but Kacerik came over. Yeah, I think Armstead has been there longer. Um, but if you put the combined years of Hyder and Kacerik together, he's there's a reason why he was taking first team reps um, all through mini camp and OTAs. So excited to see what he's going to do. The 49ers are spoiled at this position. Again, Kerry Hyder was basically a French starter for the Seattle Seahawks last year. That's not what he's going to be for the 49ers. Situational guy, depth guy at a position that the 49ers value a lot. Kerry Hyder's going to have a good year. Now, there will be some weeks where you might not even call his name. But you're going to be able to bring him in on that Bravo group, the backup defensive line group, and not worry. That's going to be crazy because you can finally rest Bosa, Drake Jackson, these other guys by having guys like Kerry Hyder come in with that Bravo group. So excited to see what he could bring this year. My guess, if I had to put the over-under on it, I'd say three and a half sacks uh, just because, again, I think his snaps are going to be so limited this year. But that would be a huge win. If you get three and a half sacks from Kerry Hyder, that means all the people in front of him are getting the production and the work and all the things that you want them to get. He is somebody that is there to catch you if something goes bad and we're hoping nothing goes bad for the 49ers this year I want to say thank you to anthony and josh the executive producers of this show the researchers they are freaking crushing it and man we're just going to keep counting them down